breath. Yeah. Deep breath in. Happy Wednesday! <sighs> it is Coffee Talk with David Benellis, the Facebook whisperer, and you love this guy. I love this guy. He brings calm whenever he talks. Mike, the Zen master. Zeno, Mike the land guru. <laughs> the wholesaling master. The uh, eBay wizard. I can go on forever. Mike, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, David? I am doing wonderful, but we'll get awesome. to that later in the show on why I'm right. ecstatic right now. Uh, if you are just tuning in, uh, watching the replay, or if you've never seen us before, you don't know what we do. We are professional, semi-professional for myself. Land flippers, right? You can flip a house, take four months, but you can flip land in a week, Mike? Is that too long? An hour. An hour. You can flip land <laughs> an hour. <laughs> yeah, if you're a ninja master like Mike, you can flip land. We're trading paper. No toilets, no tenants, no termites, no renters, no rodents, no renovations. This is the best passive income model. If you want to learn more, go to thelandgeek.com. We buy properties for 25 cents in the dollar, turn around, sell them on payment plans. That is how we get our passive income. At an average note of $150, you do the math. You want to get to $10,000 a month, divided by 150. You want to do 1,000 a month, divided by 150. That's how many deals you have to do. This is a math game. This is a formula. This is nothing to be creative with. Don't try to blaze the road on your own. Lean on the community. Go to thelandgeek.com. Learn about the resources there. If you click under uh, students and prospective students, there is a great webinar on there uh, underneath flight school. Watch that. Check it out. It'll be worth an hour of your time. It could change your life. Good. Mike, we're going to talk all about the mental side of this business today. Right. I mean, this could yeah. be. Plain. Oh, nice. Keep calm and carry. <laughs> I already, I already had my cup of coffee. If you can't tell already. <laughs> wow. We've got a lot to talk to talk about because if anyone has ever done this business or any business, you know how much of a not a drag, but how overwhelming it can be to start a new business. So what was it like for you? Um, obviously, you're a firefighter. So right, you have a lot yes. of commitments and full-time yes. dad, full-time husband. What yeah. was it like for you in your first uh, you know, six months, first year of your business? Were you overwhelmed? Yeah, I think it was at the time. You know, because um, those first six months were before I actually met Mark. And, you know, that's when everything changed is when we went down and met him at a boot camp. And um, I still remember that day. It was just like that's when everything changed. The clarity came through and, you know, but you know, the reality is um, I always liken this business to the firefighting uh, world because nothing's ever the same. Nothing's ever perfect. You know, there are similar type of uh, situations, right? Similar parcels, similar fires, but everything is always about recovery. We're always in a recovery mode, but recovery is good. That means you're able to adjust in the moment and uh, you can recover from whatever happens and just follow the guidelines, the SOP as you would in our business or both of our business, the firefighting and the uh, land investing. If you have an SOP, you have a mental game plan and you stick to it, it works. Like you said, don't reinvent the wheel. I think I tried that in the beginning too. I'm going to come up with the best offer letter that anyone's (laughs) ever seen, right? I, I Who do we know? But people don't care. They basically have like a number that they want and their land parcel and your phone number. They probably call you like, what? Someone wants my land that I don't like anymore? Yeah. Okay. That's it. But, you know, all this two page letters and all kinds oh, of. Goodness. Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's part of it, right? When you're trying to just do something completely different, you're losing the momentum that, you know, Mark and the rest of the community has already you know, allowed us to, you know, tag on to. I, I heard this one guy mention this saying about like, even a fly can travel a thousand miles <laughs> on a horse of a tail. Could you tell us more about that? <laughs> you know, like, we always give these, come on. It's like, I have we do a round table. I have to give, we give our little uh, tips of the week. And I love quotes because they, they, I like when I could take something that makes sense to me in one part of my life and I connect it to another part of my life. It just brings like, extreme clarity it means it's a universal principle it's real so that's like a martial arts saying you know it's like hey even uh, a fly can travel a thousand miles if he grabs hold of a horse's tail right that, well it just means that <laughs> there's a defined process if there's someone that's like uh really like excelling in something 
shadow them. They asked the other day, remember on the we on the round table, what would you do different if you had to uh, start the uh, business over? What what's one thing you would have done differently, right? And yeah. to me, it was like, let me throw that over there. I would have yeah. followed Scott Todd closer. Yeah. Scott Todd is, is, you know, he's a phenom. We started about the same time. He embraced the system sooner than I did. And if I had stuck on to, and Scott didn't like being referenced as the horse, but this is a majestic. <laughs> I don't know why he had a problem with that. But, uh, you know, uh, if I had grabbed closer to, you know, stuck closer to him, my systems would have been in place sooner. And then I would have had the results I'm having now even sooner. So, yeah, that's a great quote. Yeah, it, it's uh, I love stealing tips from everyone else and like pawn them off as my own. So like I, I was thinking about that this morning. And I was like, you know, very very true. You know, and you know, along the lines of you know, what do you do when you're frustrated in this business? You know, there's the the whole motto of like just hustle, hustle, go hard, go hard, work hard, play hard. But I think that right. can lead to a lot of burnout, right? right? So what I think will be useful for a lot of people is taking time for yourself. Right, mm -hmm. so if uh, if an uh, airplane loses pressure, they say the mask drop down. If you're with a child, they say put your mask on first before you put your child's mask on. So you got to take care of yourself first. Right. So this is very true. So it needs to become a daily habit, whether it's 10 minutes every morning just to drown out the noise, sit very still. It could be with a cup of coffee, not, but some form of stillness, you know, some call it meditation, some, right. call it, some call it prayer. I don't care what you call it. it. Just You need to have this pausing period where you just you quiet mm -hmm. the mind so that you can approach the day strategically and not just be right. bouncing around from topic to topic, subject to subject. Um, what do you do every morning? Well, okay, so here's the whole thing. You know, meditation or centering yourself or or getting yourself realigned with your business. It doesn't have to be some esoteric crazy principle. It can be – let me give you an idea of uh, something that I do that calms me down. And I don't know. Some of you maybe can appreciate this. I have a lot of kids, and, and so we have a lot of laundry. Uh, my father always said I'd be a great husband someday because I always had to do chores around the house. <laughs> I love doing the laundry to center my mind. What I mean by this wow. is the process – if you're having a hard time with something and you're getting so – I'm call this a laundry principle, okay, for lack of – if you and you're getting so overworked and, and uh, you know, just your mind is going everywhere, you need to dive deep into one thing simple and enjoy the actual process. The process is how things get done. I used to uh, look and say, like, look how – those people that are building that house over there. I mean, when I was younger, it'd be like overwhelmed with all the things that have to go into building a house. But then you realize that someone who's deep into their trade is enjoying every moment of that experience and they're taking it step by step. So when I do the laundry, I take out the piece of clothing, I flick it down, wherever, whatever child it is, or it's my wife, um, I just have a nice thought about them and I fold wow. it up and I put it back. And I do it in a very kind of deliberate manner. It's not like I got to empty this dryer and throw all the stuff around. I take it out, flap it down. I move it and I make it and it's a conscious thought about that person wow. as I put it down. So I use it as a reminder to take pause and appreciate the things in life that matter. Clearly all of us, and I always, we talked about this before the call, David, the Land Geek yeah. community is like a large family. This is really, you take pause. What's important? Well, the family is important. So, and same thing on the business. If you're having a hard time mailings or marketing, break it down and go into it and don't try to do 10 things that day. Do that one thing. And really just enjoy the process. And when you slow down and you do that, everything changes. So it's not some esoteric principle about how you got to go do so many breaths and you know, monitor your in-breath and your out-breath. Of course, that stuff, I'm not making light of it. It's very real. But you can do that in your daily life. That's that's, that very, that's very beautiful. That's actually kind of like next level, being present, right? And right. there is this – I read somewhere in some book. Uh, it was a simple quote. And, you know, I like quotes too. So I kind of rag on you about quotes, but I totally dig them. <laughs> um, so, God didn't like being called a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, Majestic. <laughs> this one came to mind this morning when I was eating breakfast. It, it says, when eating, eat. So whenever you're doing any particular task, just do that task. Right. So instead of eating on your phone, doing other multitasking, your brain is scattered. So if you can train yourself to be doing one task at a time, if it's folding laundry, I've never known of a story of someone being so present folding laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Relaxes me. 
So if I get a little extra, I do some kung fu steps with it too. That's a whole routine I learned. But anyway, <laughs> nice. that's beyond. That's next next level. Yeah. <laughs> but if look, if you're doing due diligence, do due diligence. Be in the moment. If you're right. doing uh, marketing, do marketing. So mm-hmm. like, it's very easy to be overwhelmed on all the different things you need to do in this business. But right. you know, if you can just drown out the noise, put the blinders on like those racehorses, and just I need to mail today. I'm going to mail, and I'm not going to think about anything else. Yeah, you can really get rid of the anxiety that comes along with this business. From you know, I have to do this. I have to do this. I got to right. hire this VA. I got to get this check out. I got this tax bill. I got. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you say massive action, it doesn't have to be massive. A- it can be massive action on something small. Right, so massive yeah. action could be dedicating one day to one tiny part of your business that's today, and you want to get it right. Uh, or take a whole week, or take twelve weeks. Do a twelve week year. Take massive action on one little thing, and then that little thing will be gone, and then move on to the next one. That's it. That's it. I've been doing a uh, one day in the business, one day on the business. Mm-hmm. And just not nice, you know, blurring the lines like whatever that it is that day. So Monday is on the business. So I only worked on the business. Tuesday was in the business. I only worked in the business, and this has really helped me find focus because you know I did. I used to struggle with focus a lot, and you know I got to a point where in order to scale, I need to have focused hours of work. Yeah. So it really comes down to this is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to do anything else. Right. And it gets done. You eat that frog, as Ben Clark says. Nice. Eat the frog. <laughs> yeah. You complete the priority you feel most the rest of the day rolls. One step. Ah, very nice. Because there's always something we're avoiding, right? Right, Ben? Yeah. We're avoiding the one thing that needs to get it done. Let me do the other five things that are easier. <laughs> exactly. You know, like there's so many books out there. The one thing. Anyway, you can read books till you're, you're blue in the face. It's just. At some point, you just got to execute on these books, execute on this business. Right. Stop thinking one day I'll have my own business. Stop thinking one day I'll scale up or one day I'll hire a VA. No, it's like right. today or in worst case, later today. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple, right? That's the whole yeah. idea. This business does not have to be complicated. In fact, an easy litmus test for your business, if it's if your pipeline and your business model is working – correctly and working the way that it should is that I you should be able to have a conversation with somebody and within a few minutes explain to them very you know an easy discussion tell them this is how it works left to right and it should just flow and if any point you have a hard time uh, talking about it then there's a problem with your system and you it should be just complete to you David I can tell you straight out what it is and you're like ah I get that. Yeah. But if it's certain points where it's kind of confusing and I'm not really communicating it good to you, well, that means there's a breakdown in the system. There's a clog. The pipeline's not open. And uh, so, you know, keeping it simple is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can break down any action into very, very tiny increments, right? If you want to break yes. down the mailing piece, well, what do you need exactly? You need a list. You need some names. Yeah. You need some offers. I mean, you can break it down like if it's getting offers out and you're still working on your list, okay, today I'm going to scrub my list. If I get past that, even better. But today I'm going to scrub my list. Like, right. You, 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 so you want to have both really big goals for this business, but also you want to have daily attainable goals as well. Yeah. So like if I said in one day I want to automate the entire buy side, I'm probably not going to do so well. <laughs> you know, if I said I want to automate how my responses to sellers is done. Okay, that that's possible. That could be done one day. Yeah. So, you know, breaking things down. You're identifying really what needs to be worked on. I Just putting a, a laser focus on the one thing that's really eating at you and then move from there. And the mailings, like you said, boy, people really get kind of hung up on that. And I think you know, we talk about it all the time, but there's no perfect mailing. And if why would you take the time to make a perfect mailing? It's just a, okay, I'm going to send out 10,000 offers. Am I really going to go through each one of those properties individually and, and do some quick due diligence on them and all that? Oh, my God. Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah I would never get a mailing out. <laughs> exactly. It's, you know, consistency. And then it, it balances out. 
that three to five percent acceptance rate is there, and it's uh, it takes into account bad addresses, bad offers, whatever it may be, and you still get that consistent uh, return. It's just you know there's no perfect mailing, and it doesn't need to be. Absolutely, absolutely. If you are just tuning in, this is Mike Zano. I am David Benellis. We are full time mostly full-time for myself, land investors. We trade paper and we change our lives financially, which allows us to better our relationships. If you want to learn more, go to langigot.com. If you want to schedule a call with us, you can do so at langigot.com forward slash training. We can explain to you a little bit more about this business model or what education as a community we can offer you. There's different paths for each person, and we it's our job to diagnose your current situation, where you want to go, and then find the best path for you. Hmm. How, do you how do you like these calls? I love those calls. How do you like those calls, Mike? Oh, I love them. I love talking to people. I love hearing stories. I mean, uh, everybody's got an interesting story. In fact, that's why I, one of the reasons that I had to actually get someone on the acquisition on the sales side, because I love stories. and boy, I'd be on the phone all day with one person. I just <laughs> love like, really? Tell me about that. Oh, really? And then it'd be like a half hour in. It's like, I just love talking. So anyway, meeting people that are new and then hearing about what they want to do and then seeing their successes afterwards, Oh yeah, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, two last things is um, how do you celebrate every win? Because I believe celebrating every win is a key to main, staying positive with this business or any business, really. Um, right. So how do you celebrate every win or some wins? Yeah, it's important. I mean, like I said at the beginning, this business is about family. Um, the reason I did it is because um, I wanted to make more time. You know, I, I'm not in a, a soul sucking job, as someone might say. I love my job at the fire department, I love what I do. Um, I just wanted to create. Um, more time with my family. So there are other expenses I had. So any win I have is directly thrown back, whether it's taking, I have uh, uh, four children, uh, some of them have significant others now. So whether it's taking like nine of us out to eat for, it's like, hey, let's all go out for food tonight. Or whether it's buying a pool we just bought for the uh, the yard or anything that contributes to, um, you know, bringing us closer together makes that all the while, all worthwhile for me, all all the effort. So I celebrate every win, whether um, it's taking them all, hey, let's go to a movie tonight. Just grab everybody, go to a movie. Just, it's always including them. Or if I'm going over my dad, bring him a bottle of wine, a nice nice new nice. bottle of wine because I sold some. You know, I, it's always something. My mother, some chocolate. It doesn't matter. It's something to do with family. That's how I celebrate it. Yeah. So I celebrate by actually telling my family. So my family is going to be impacted by these sales. I tell right. them every time. And my dad, like he lights up like a big smile on his face. It's like, yeah, go get them. So, like, <laughs> it encourages me like to keep moving forward and you know keep trying, right. pushing through. Um, so yeah, I celebrate every win. I, I used to celebrate with a glass of wine, but I had so many sales recently. I, I, might, develop, I might develop a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, bottles of wine everywhere. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a little more in depth question from Sandy. <clears throat> Um, so how did you guys deal with distractions, demands for your attention, more on focus, pretty much go, go deeper on, you know, what we do for focus. So recently, you know, I was working from the cabinet shop uh, in the office and that was okay for a time, but then it just got too distracting. Like things that bothered me, like never bothered me in the past, the sounds of saws and machinery and doors opening and closing never bothered me. And it started to, and I would sit at my desk for eight hours and get, an hour of work done. It was horrible. Mm. So I needed a change of environment. So I would get whatever I had to get done in the cabinet shops in the office. And then I would Uber it to a Starbucks. This way it's not easy for me to leave. I would have to Uber out. I'm, I'm there. I'm focused. Um, I can work in a coffee shop. Some people can't, but you know, I can work this. So you, you sometimes you got to find a different environment. Um, I used to try the working in the evenings from home, splitting time with family, but at least I'm there, but that wasn't working out either. Like when I'm home, I'm going to be home, not on my computer. When I'm at Starbucks, I'm going to be on my computer working. So any other tips there, Mike? <laughs> it reminds me of the fire department again. We have a saying, nothing new after two. It's like, if we're going to be uh, doing all kinds of drills <laughs> and stuff, you can slow down. <laughs> nothing new after two. But, <laughs> so let's say, 
the reality is like there's a certain point in the day where you kind of just um, kind of start to fizzle out and your focus isn't what it should be. And so making a conscious effort, whether it's four o'clock or whatnot, just that's it. I'm done. The rest of the day is going to be focused on my family. So just being really kind of concrete about that. And, 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 you know, um, you know, we talk about this, was it profit first, pay yourself first, but it's the same thing with time, pay yourself first with time, dedicate a time of the day when it ends and the family is priority. You know, I mean, this business is putting your family as a priority because you're developing the means to take care of them, but also they need your attention. So putting a, a, a definite time where it, okay, this is it, it's done time to go out and do things with them, whether it's uh, just listen to them talk or I don't know, uh, jumping around with them or anything goofy, just spend time with them. So I think that that's huge for me in terms of just defining this is it, you know, and because that phone could ring, <laughs> All day and all night, and, yes, and, it it will if you, and it will if you let it. And if you don't have a mechanism in place to take care of it, um, so you just got to really prioritize. And then, lastly, when um, when Sandy mentioned, you know, how do you pick up where you left off? So I heard this tip on a mastermind call one day, and if you want to be on, uh, be to able to watch these mastermind calls, you definitely want to join the Gold Mastermind Group. It's worth every penny. Um, you can learn more about that at uh, blangig.com, I think forward slash GMM, Gold Mastermind. Uh, if not, I'll put a link to that here in the comments. But on one of those calls, I had someone say, before their workday is over, they make a list or they make notes to themselves on what they want to continue when they get back to work. So it could be, you know, as simple as putting in a post-it, okay, uh, when you get back to work, uh, finish due diligence on this property, Make sure the mailings are going out. Uh, make sure you put up ads for this. And then when you get back to work, it's like having a boss tell you exactly what to do. You don't have to figure it out. So, you know, that's one little hack you could do. Hmm. So, uh, my, <laughs> I like it. I, I just got some wonderful news before this. Well, let's call. hear it. What do you got? I, You're kind of giddy there. What's going on? <laughs> I love my family. I love my family so much. And now we are going to be growing. What? Uh, yeah. My wife walked in, said she's pregnant, showed me the little pregnancy six holding my son. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I love another, it. That's part of the why, right? Yeah. Another little <laughs> Lengi awesome. baby. You know, Tate Litchfield, just, <laughs> his wife just gave birth. I think it was last uh, last Thursday, I believe, last Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to be adding another Congratulations, show. David. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, that's why I'm doing this business, right? To have more time with my family. And now there's another one to get to share it with. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm definitely celebrating this win. This is this is amazing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, awesome. Phenomenal. Yeah. So I'm not going to be in the mastermind call today. I'm going to be uh, spending some time <laughs> with my wife. You guys can have have your fun. Uh, I will be jumping for joy. That's awesome. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the congratulations you're giving me. Um, what's beautiful about this business? Like, it sounds like a pitch, right? I'm trying to get you to sign up for something. But look, if you really just put some time on this business, you can design the lifestyle that you want. And I'm doing it. I'm living it. You can do it too. There's no reason. I'm not. I'm nothing special. But man, I, I love this business. Like I used to be afraid of having more kids because, like, oh, how am I going to pay for everything? Right, I don't got to right. worry about that now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip a piece of property and pay for this pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> pay for the birth bill at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to worry about their college. I don't got to worry about that. You know, like I can flip some land. Like it's not, it's not hard. Like don't complicate this thing. Like just keep it simple. Keep moving forward. And the cliches are true. Like you can make your dreams come true. You just got to take action. That's it. It's all about creating more time, and then you fill it with what you want. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, everyone, for the uh, quick shout-outs uh, on the comment section. You know, f- lean on the community. If you're ever stuck and it takes you more than one hour to do any particular task, reach out. You know, like we have so many resources. There's a free Facebook group, the official – okay, this is a tongue twister. The Land Geek official wealth creation and motivation group. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Reach out on there, you know. Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, any last words? Ah, just stay positive. Um, you know, 
This is I love talking to everybody. Hopefully, I'll be seeing a lot of you at the boot camp, David. How, how long? How far away is that? It's quick, huh? It's quick. A weeks. August eleventh uh, to thirteenth. Today is already July nineteenth. And I hear Orlando's already booking up. It's crazy, Orlando, right? Going up. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp to register now. Do not hesitate. If it's up to Mike and I, we will make sure every boot camp is sold out three months in advance. So you better book quickly. <laughs> they are selling out very quickly. That is for yeah, sure. they are. I mean, we might well, have it's to two and a half days of immersing yourself in this business. You can't, you know, you can't ask for anything better. All the coaches are there. It's like uh, you make such a net, such a group of people that you network with and people that are doing the business for a long period of time. People that are new. Everybody meshing together, breaking up in groups. I mean, it's just it's. Mark puts on a great show. It's awesome. Yeah, it's 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 amazing, and you get to see Mike Zeno there. You get to see David me there. Is there. I mean, yeah. that's always <laughs> fun. You know, I had someone actually come up to me and take a picture with me at the last boot camp. That was kind of really awkward and weird. Whoa, <laughs> <stock> status. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like a Z-list celebrity now. <laughs> oh man, ah, it's him. <laughs> oh well. Have a great you look day. On TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never want to hear that. Oh, you looked more handsome on TV. Not, no. <laughs> oh, man. Well, everyone. Uh, Congrats again, David. Pleasure spending time with you. Mike, always good talking to you. Um, have awesome. a wonderful, productive Wednesday. You bet.